There are about 23 dragons who appear in at least some capacity during the Dance of the Dragons Civil War. Whether they are bonded with the Dragon Lord and fly off to battle, or simply hang around King's Landing and Dragonstone, in this video, I'll discuss most of the dragons we are likely to see in House of the Dragon. I'll do my best not to spoil when any major dragons and or their riders die during the Dance of the Dragons, for those of you who have not read Fire and Blood. But if you want to go into the show knowing absolutely nothing, definitely click off this video. House of the Dragon will start in about 101 AC, and time skips several times until the story ends in around 135 AC. That means that this show takes place about a century after Aegon's conquest, when the only three dragons in Westeros were Balerion, Vagar, and Meraxes, and the only three dragon riders were Aegon and his sisters, Visenya and Rhaenys. Since Aegon forged the kingdom, however, House Targaryen's power and prosperity soared, thanks in large part to King Jaehaerys, Aegon's grandson, who made House Targaryen into a solidified, stable dynasty, despite the best efforts of Aegon's sons, Aenys and Maegor, to ruin it. The first dragon I want to talk about is Balerion the Black Dread. Balerion is the last dragon who was actually born in Valyria before the Doom, and Aegon the Conqueror rode him during his conquest. After Aegon, his son Maegor the Cruel tamed Balerion and committed several atrocities with him. And after Maegor, Jaehaerys' niece Arya tamed Balerion but then disappeared, and most people think he flew her to his old home, the ruins of Valyria. And Arya returned a year and a half later with disfigured skin, bloody eyes, and a stick-thin body. Balerion would chill out in the dragon pit after that debacle until 93 AC, when a 16-year-old Viserys Targaryen claimed him in the dragon's old age. Viserys was only able to fly around King's Landing three times before realizing Balerion was too old and weak to fly anymore. Balerion died in 94 AC, around the age of 200, and is the only known dragon to die of old age instead of warfare. His gigantic skull is on display in King's Landing, and seemingly worshipped by the Targaryens and the Dragon Keepers, and the show has made the bones of his skull black, which is book accurate. It makes sense that a dragon's bones would be charred black, given how much smoke and fire they breathe, and I think we'll hear references to the Black Dread and plenty of visits to his shrine in the show. Rhaenyra Targaryen's dragon is Syrax, a she-dragon named after a Valyrian goddess. Rhaenyra claimed Syrax when she was just seven years old, and was her only dragon rider. Syrax has yellow scales and had a very peaceful life until the war. She laid several clutches of eggs during Viserys' reign, and it's implied that all three of Rhaenyra's son's dragons were hatched from Syrax's eggs, which is a kind of cool parallel. Syrax's children are tamed by Rhaenyra's children. Syrax also spent lots of time with Caraxes, Daemon Targaryen's dragon, as he and Rhaenyra would often go flying together from King's Landing to Dragonstone and back. Speaking of Caraxes, the great formidable beast had red and black scales, and was of an experienced middle age by the time of the war. His first rider was Aemon Targaryen, Jaehaerys' first son and Daemon's uncle. He was so fierce that the dragon keepers named him the Bloodworm, a reference to old Valyrian fireworms. Aemon and his siblings Balon and Alyssa all flew their dragons together frequently, so Caraxes was quite familiar with Melis and Vagar. Caraxes would have to fight Vagar during the Dance of the Dragons, when he was ridden by Daemon Targaryen. The rogue prince tamed the Bloodworm at the age of 24, and most notably used him in his War for the Stepstones, in which he carved himself his own kingdom, since he couldn't have Westeros. Caraxes would spend even more time with Vagar when Daemon wed Lena Valerion, who had tamed Vagar, and they would fly all over Essos together, making it even more tragic when the two dragons had to fight so many years later. Vagar is the last surviving dragon from the trio of conquerors. She too was named for a Valerian god, and her scales were a mixture of bronze and blue, with bright green eyes. She was first ridden by Queen Visenya during the conquest, where she traveled all across Westeros and Dorne. When Visenya died, Vagar went unridden for 29 years, until Balon, the second son of Jaehaerys, claimed her in the Dragon Pit. Balon died from 101 AC, and Vagar was riderless again until young Lena Valerion tamed her, and Lena loved to fly. So Vagar, Caraxes, and Syrax would have been seen flying together above Dragonstone and Driftmark all the time by Lena, her husband Daemon, and Princess Rhaenyra. In the House of the Dragon trailer, we can also see a young Aemon Targaryen approaching Vagar, and he tames her as well, unleashing her dragon fire on the Riverlands during the Dance of the Dragons. Sea Smoke is one of my favorite dragons. He's a pale, silvery gray, young and nimble dragon tamed first by Laenor Valerion. He was described as Laenor's pride and passion, and we can see him burning down some Triarchy soldiers here in the trailer during his father Corlys' war for the Stepstones. Laenor doesn't originally fight in the Stepstones in Fire and Blood, but I really like the change, as it means we'll get to see Seasmoke in action during Season 1. 
Melisa Red Queen was a she-dragon ridden first by Alyssa Targaryen, a daughter of King Jaehaerys. Melisa has scarlet scales and pink membranes, with horns and claws bright as copper. She is considered one of the fastest dragons alive, quicker than both Caraxes and Vagar. Rhaenys Targaryen, the queen who never was, tamed Melisa in 87 AC and flew her all around Westeros when accompanying her father, Prince Aemon, on his royal progresses. Rhaenys was being groomed for leadership one day, as Aemon did not have a son, but of course Aemon died and Rhaenys was passed over for the throne on account of her being a woman. We will see Rhaenys armored up and flying Melisa into battle for Princess Rhaenyra, likely starting in Season 2 of House of the Dragon. Like I said before, Rhaenyra's dragon Cyrax hatched three eggs, which became the dragons tamed by her sons. Her eldest son, Prince Jaehaerys Valerion, hatched his dragon egg very young and called him Vermax. Vermax was just big enough to ride at the start of the war, so Jaehaerys flew on his back to the Eyrie and to Winterfell in order to gain support for the Black Faction. Some claim that during his visit to Winterfell, while Jaehaerys was becoming good friends with Lord Cregan Stark and possibly falling in love with his bastard sister, Sarah Snow, that Vermax laid a clutch of dragon eggs down in the Winterfell crypts. Check out my video on dragon eggs in Winterfell to hear more about that. Jaehaerys' younger brother Lucerys hatched his dragon egg as well, and called him Arax. Arax grew into a pearlescent white color, with yellow flame, golden eyes, and a golden chest. Arax, like Jaehaerys' Vermax, was just mature enough to ride when the dance broke out, when Lucerys was only about 14 years old, a year younger than Jaehaerys. Their younger brother Joffrey Valerion hatched his cradle egg and named him Taraxes, however he was too small and young to be ridden into war. No matter how much Joffrey begged, his mother Rhaenyra forbade it. However, his older brother Jaehaerys later commanded Joffrey to take Taraxes to the Vale and defend it from green forces with his cousin Rhaena. Speaking of Rhaena, the daughter of Daemon Targaryen and Lena Valerion, her dragon egg hatched in the Vale, and she named her Morning. Morning had pink scales and black horns, and wasn't large enough to be ridden until after the war. Raina's twin sister Bela also had a dragon, named Moondancer. Moondancer was hatched several years before Morning, and she had pale green scales, with pearl horns. Unlike Morning, Moondancer was old enough to be ridden during the Dance of the Dragons, which Bela did, and engaged in a famous battle over the Dragonmont. Sunfire will be another key dragon in House of the Dragon, up there with Cyrax and Caraxes. Sunfire the Golden has, as you can probably guess, gleaming gold scales and pink wing membranes. Aeon, the son of King Viserys and Alison Hightower, claimed the young dragon as a child and flew him throughout the Civil War. They formed a really tight-knit bond, which I'm really excited to see portrayed on screen, such as when both Dragon and Dragon Rider were injured in a battle over Rook's Rest, and while Aegon was taken back to her cover in King's Landing, Sunfire cried out for him and eventually found his way back to Aegon on Dragonstone. I already mentioned that Aegon's younger brother Aemond claimed Vagar and fought with him for his brother the king in the Dance of the Dragons. However, their youngest brother, Prince Daron, also had a dragon. Daron the Daring bonded with his dragon Tessarion at a very young age, and the cobalt blue she dragon, along with her cobalt blue dragonfire, joined the war during the battle on the Honeywine as Prince Daron saved Lord Hightower and his army. Daron became a hero amongst the Green Army, and there was even talk of naming him king when his brother Aegon was injured and missing. Dreamfire will be another fan-favorite dragon on the side of Team Green. The silvery blue she-dragon was first hatched during the reign of Aegon the Conqueror, and the young hatchling bonded with Rhaena Targaryen, the daughter of Aenys I. After Rhaena's death, Dreamfire made her lair in a dragon pit of King's Landing, until 11-year-old Helena Targaryen, the daughter of Viserys and Alicent, tamed her. Helena didn't really join the fighting in the source material, but perhaps House of the Dragon will change that and show us Dreamfire and Sunfire flying side by side for Team Green, ridden by Helena and her husband Aegon. Silverwing and Vermithor the Bronze Fury are two of my favorite dragons in Targaryen history, and some of the oldest fighting dragons during the dance. Silverwing was first tamed by Alysanne Targaryen, and her brother husband, King Jaehaerys, tamed Vermithor. The pair of dragons and dragon riders were beloved by the people of King's Landing. Alysanne flew Silverwing all the way up north to the Wall and tried to fly up beyond the Wall, but her dragon kept turning back south, a very strange and ominous behavior. Long after the deaths of Old King Jaehaerys and Good Queen Alysanne, their dragons Vermithor and Silverwing were tamed by two dragon seeds, named Hugh Hammer and Alf White, respectively, who answered Prince Jaehaerys' call for brave folks to try and tame a riderless dragon and be rewarded handsomely for loyal service to Team Black. The two dragons fought quite a bit in the dance, and loved each other until the very end, just like their original riders, Jaehaerys and Alysanne. The last three dragons I want to talk about are Sheepstealer, Cannibal, and Grey Ghost. These are three wild dragons living freely on Dragonstone. Cannibal was the oldest, with scales of black coal and menacing green eyes. 
His exact age is unknown, but we can deduce that he was alive before the old King Jaehaerys was even born, since Sheep Stealer was described as having hatched when Jaehaerys was young, and Cannibal is said to be the oldest and largest of these three wild dragons. Reports claim that Cannibal had an angry personality, and often feasted on dead dragons, young hatchlings, and dragon eggs, but Cannibalism had never been reported to any other dragon. Some people say that Cannibal belonged to an entirely different species, a different lineage of dragons, which would explain why he was so antagonistic towards other dragons. It's also said that Cannibal lived on Dragonstone before the Targaryens ever arrived, which would make him older than Balerion the Black Dread ever was. Dragonstone was an outpost of the Great Valyrian Freehold before the Targaryens settled there, so it's not impossible that Cannibal hatched and made his lair on the Dragon Mount years before the Doom of Valyria occurred, though Mace was claimed this is just a tall tale. Cannibal was one of only four dragons who survived the dance, but he vanished after the war, never to be seen again. Sheep Stealer was the second oldest of the wild dragons. He lived on the far side of Dragonstone, and flew off in between Driftmark and the Wendwater to hunt. Sheep Stealer had mud-brown scales, and while he was not antagonistic towards humans, unlike Cannibal, he would devour as many sheep as possible, stealing them from shepherds. After over seven decades living riderless on Dragonstone, a dragon seed girl named Nettles was able to tame him simply by feeding him sheep and earning his trust. Nettles then became endeared to Team Black and Prince Daemon, but after the war, Nettles and her dragon went into exile, with reports of being seen in Cracklaw Point and finally in the Vale and deep into the Mountains of the Moon. Grey Ghost was the youngest of the three wild dragons, dwelling atop a smoking vent on Dragonstone's easternmost volcano. His grey scales made him camouflage with the sky, and people below him named him Grey Ghost due to the fact they could scarcely ever see him. He was never tamed by a dragon rider, and spent his time peacefully hunting and avoiding humans. The last dragons we're going to talk about did not have exciting lives like the older ones who came before. Stormcloud, for example, was the young dragon of Aegon the Younger, Rhaenyra and Daemon's youngest son, also called the Dragonbane. Aegon became jaded by the warfare of the Dance of the Dragons, and by the end, he hated dragons, and never flew again. He hated his half-sister Reyna's dragon, Morning, as well, and was blamed for the death of the last dragon, a tiny, sickly she-dragon who never got a name, and marked the extinction of dragons in Westeros, until the Daenerys hatched Drogon, Rhaegal, and Viserion using blood magic, 150 years later. It was said that magic had left the world the day the last dragon died, and dragons are certainly tied in some way to the status of magic. It is interesting that right around the time that Daenerys hatches her three petrified eggs, Melisandre starts to believe in Stannis Baratheon as Azor High reborn, and the others start to stir and move south to antagonize humans beyond the wall. Speaking of Danny's three dragon eggs, I believe House of the Dragon might answer the mystery of Game of Thrones, and tell us how these three dragon eggs came into the possession of Magister Illyrio of Pentos, who gave them as a wedding gift to Daenerys. Illyrio said that the dragons came from Ashai. Dragon's eggs, Daenerys. And the Shadowlands beyond Ashai. And the Shadowlands are a region steeped in mystery and mysticism. Many readers and citizens of Planetos believe dragons actually originated in the Shadowlands, not Valyria, and may still reside there to this day. Many readers also believe those eggs were laid by Dreamfire, the aforementioned mount first of Princess Reyna and then Queen Helena. Here's how. Princess Reyna had a very close friend named Alyssa Farman, a young lady from Fair Isle. Reyna spent lots of time in her young adulthood at Fair Isle, while her uncle Migra the Cruel waged war against the Faith of the Seven, who hated Targaryen incest. Coincidentally, Reyna married her brother Aegon, so she thought it was safer to reside on Fair Isle off the coast of the Westerlands. When Reyna eventually moved back to Dragonstone to be with her daughter Arya, Alyssa grew bored of the volcanic island. She always preferred to be out on the water, sailing the Sunset Sea. So one day, Alyssa Farman stole three of Dreamfire's dragon eggs and sold them in Bravos to earn enough coin to build the ship, which she would then use to sail further west than anyone had before. Oddly, no one in Westeros knows what's to the far west, so Alyssa was determined to find out. Well, she was never seen again, but perhaps House of the Dragon will mention the three dragon eggs making their way through Essos and connect the show to Game of Thrones in that way. It would be cool, but I admit it's probably unlikely. Let me know in the comments which dragon you're most excited to see in House of the Dragon. Thanks for watching. Your family has dragons. Dreams didn't make us kings. Dragons did.